Welcome everyone, Questine here on Serious Gaming with a discussion on a Total War Saga Troy and what are the hardest and easiest factions to play in the game. Well, in terms of difficulty, what is really going to determine how hard the campaign is going to be for you is your starting position, your starting situation. Now, the game has a bunch of difficulty difficulties here like it tells you oh Achilles normal, Agamemnon easy, Odysseus hard, Melanaeus normal. But does any of this hold true? The answer to that is no, it really doesn't. So let's talk about the hardest faction. Let's go over that and see who actually has the hardest start. Now the game would tell you Odysseus and Paris have the hardest start. Well, let's take a look Always at Paris and where he's where he starts. Now, he does have the Helen of Troy mechanic, so he gets bonuses if he and Helen are interacting um, uh, frequently, but they also get significant ah, negatives if they're, if they're far away from Menelaus each other. So for, instance, so, for instance, he is happy, right, if he's, if he's close to Helen, so he starts off, you know, heroic even. <laughs> so yeah, he, uh, he is in a good mood. Yeah, he starts happy, he can even get uh, heroic if he rescues Helen. So if you lose Helen, you get heroic, If you, you but you start off happy. And you probably want to keep that. If you're separated from her, you get lonely, which actually gives you campaign movement uh, speed, but loses morale of your units. But it's more than that. Then you also have Helen's mood, which is happiness minus 10 for your entire faction. Then you have various species. So there's a lot of bonuses and negatives, but, and that's the mechanic. Then you have Prime's Air to deal with. Now, here's the thing about all of this. You start just south of Troy. There's Troy, there's Prime, 20 uh, stack army, right? And you have Larissa uh, Troas yourself. Now, Paris supposedly has a hard starting position. I call bullshit on that, because why is that? Well, you have two factions you start at war with. One of which Hector also starts at war with. And there are these fellows who only have three settlements, all of which are minor settlements. The other one you start at war with is Asia, who are to the south. So, you, so the way they've made the game is that they expect Hector to expand east, Aeneas, who's the lord of Dardania, to expand north, and Paris to expand south and possibly west, right? That's the idea here. The thing is, this faction is going to be a cakewalk. And on top of that, you have three major factions, Hector, Troy, and Dardania. And of course you have uh, Met Metinia, uh, who is also friendly with you, right? So you can get agreements, right? Uh, you have these factions, all of which are friendly and all of which are pretty strong. Troy in particular has a, will get a lot of resources. Many factions will get a lot of resources, but Troy in particular has it is an economic powerhouse with an enormous number of resources. And you can use that. You can barter away. You can uh, get single barter agreements where they just basically hand you over resources if you ask for them. Now, it won't work constantly. You can't just do this every turn. But every couple of turns, you can ask the AI for resources and the AI will be willing to grant you that. So Troy having that many resources gives Trojan players and the Trojan AI in general... Um, significant advantage because you are not going to lack for the resources you need. In fact, from my experience playing two campaigns, several dozen turns in, one as Aeneas, one as Achilles, my experience is that the Trojans are actually stronger than Achaeans, far more strong, uh, far stronger, because they start their strength is largely concentrated, they have more, far more economic power thanks to Troy, and also Sarpedon really helps out in this, Lycia helps out to this and they don't really have strong opponents uh, to deal with. Like, many of these factions over here are actually friendly towards Troy. I mean, you have Troilus, who controls Paris, who controls the Straits, and then you have uh, Elion, right? Who is also friendly. So he's like, look at the Paris situation. You have one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> five factions, right? That you start with good relations with. You can get military alliances very quickly. Troy is very hard to beat just because of the military and economic powerhouse that they are. So Paris having a hard start, that is laughable. That is really laughable. Why? Because he has to move south to deal with Asia. That's not hard at all. 
So you're just gonna move south along the coast, deal with that. Maybe if you're foolish enough to get involved into a war with the... Uh, with the Amazons? But Hippolyta is... Like, the Amazons are also... Friendly towards the Trojans. So it's like... So it's like, you don't have strong natural opponents. You do have the Achaeans, but here's the thing. The Achaeans have a lot of people that want a slice of them. And you can always march there. And indeed, I've seen plenty of, plenty of situations where Hector just, like, declares war on Mycenae and marches on Mycenae. And actually succeeds in that. So the Trojan situation is pretty easy in general. Not It doesn't matter uh, which Trojan faction you're playing on. As they're all in a pretty good position and they all have a pretty easy start. And a pretty easy campaign in general. Okay, what about Odysseus? The other guy who has who has a hard start. Well, let's take a look at his campaign start and let's take a look at what he's got to deal with. Okay, so you start with Ithaca. And you have the major settlement. The only faction you're at war with are the Mentees here. They have two of uh, Odysseus's islands. You wipe them out very quickly, very efficiently. They only have a, a small army here and another army here. You wipe them out very quickly. And then you have free reign. You can go in the Peloponnese. You can fight some of the factions here. Though keep in mind that this is another thing. Keep in mind you have Sparta there. And you have Mycenae close to Sparta. Then you have Pylos, which is Nestor, right? Of course, I who is also friendly towards you. And then uh, you you have Arcadia as well, though I'm. It is good see to them. talk immediately. So you also have Arcadia, this who you be a good also can get friendly relations with. So you'll have these factions to directly to the east of you, well, southeast, right? That are friendly. Now you do have Ellis who are going to actually cause problems. And you do have plenty of actions here in the northern part of Greece that are going to be hostile. But you only have to worry about the single direction, which is northeast or north. That's the only threats you're going to have to deal with are from those from th that this direction, northeast really, that you're going to have to deal with. And you can make alliances and deals with all of these factions. You don't have to worry about the Trojan powerhouse coming down on your head. Now, Odysseus does have a problem. He has coastal supremacy. Now, coastal supremacy means that, yeah, oh yeah, you get better harbors, absolutely better docks, but the problem with him is that he can't expand on land. He can only upgrade the main settlement bit building when you're talking about land settlement, landlocked settlement. So he's the kind of guy who wants to fight at sea, and you can absolutely do that. Just fight on the coast, conquer the coast, and let other, others worry about that. Now, Odysseus doesn't have enormous advantages compared to some of the other factions, and that is certainly a weakness on his part, but he does have a powerful army. Uh, he does have a very powerful starting position. I have no clue whatsoever as to the, as to why the developers decided to say Odysseus has a hard starting position. Paris, I can understand, right? He starts on the coast. Everyone wants a piece of Paris. Like, if the Achaeans come for Troy, they're going to land on Paris's doorstep. That is a weakness of his. But you can more than make up for it because of his strong allies, strong economy, etc. Whereas Odysseus... No major faction starts near you. No major faction is going to come for Odysseus. No one cares about that. And yet he's the hardest. That is ridiculous. So no, it isn't Odysseus. It isn't Paris. Who is the hardest faction to play? Well, as, as I mentioned, all the Trojan factions have an easy start. And an easy campaign in general. Just because they all start concentrated. They have powerful economies and powerful militaries. So who is hardest? Well... What about Agamemnon or Mel Melanaeus? Well, Agamemnon actually has an easy time himself. Uh, he does start on the border, so he's going to fight people from the very uh, start, Athens, all that. But he does have the Arcadians that he can make deals with. He also has uh, Nestor, who he can make deal deals with. So he's in a pretty good position, and he can actually gain a lot of economic bonuses thanks to his vassals. He actually wants to vassalize people uh, because he can basically squeeze them for coin, right? So king of kings. Then you have Men Menelaus. Well, Menelaus has no foes, really, at all. Like, the only faction he starts at war with, 
that he has to deal with initially is like the Troizen, who Agamemnon starts its war with and is the thing he's going to be dealing with. So it's not uh, so Menelaus also a pretty easy start. Okay. Then we have Achilles. Now Achilles has a powerful military, a lot of units, a lot of speed to those units. And he can also he also has the advantage of Living Legend. Now let me I'll explain this. Living Legend is the idea that, you know, Achilles has a legendary status, but people will challenge him for that and he has to deal with them. But there are enormous bonuses that Achilles gets for dealing with these challengers. So as you start a campaign, you have free opponents. Once you defeat them, you get minus 20% upkeep to all your units, four influence faction wide, and gives you extra units. So every time challengers appear, and dealing with them is pretty easy, except the ones that will refuse to duel you or back down because really they're... Nice. Uh, because you're fighting a war with their faction. In that situation, you may have to actually defeat them on the battlefield. So if I confront this, he refuses, and he basically says, hey, come and get it, right? But here's the problem. He has those bonuses, but he also has significant negatives. So you have hot-blooded Achilles. So he starts in proud mood, but he's going to degenerate to one of these moods, indignant, grieving, or outraged. Now, these give bonuses, but they also give significant negatives. So, Indignant gives you an economic bonus, but also screws you over diplomatically, most importantly. Grieving screws you over in terms of your happiness when you lose too many units, but gives you favor of the gods and experience for new units. And then you have Outrage, if you are fighting a lot, which gives you a significant bonus to your military, a significant bonus to, um, to your income from raiding, looting, or sacking. But reduces your economy by a fairly significant amount, which is a problem. But beyond the faction mechanics of Achilles, the actual issue you have is all of these factions, some of them are neutral, or pretty much all of them are neutral, but all of them, almost all of them want a piece of you. And it's very easy for the situation to degenerate here. like. The game in the intro sequence says, oh, you can use the Thessalians as your western bulwark, but the Thessalians hate you and want, want to destroy you and will declare a war on you. Then you have all these factions to the north that also want to, de to destroy you. Then you have the factions in the south. You start surrounded completely by opponents, even like Amides, the guy who you start with decent relations with, he will not do anything. He doesn't, he, even he doesn't particularly like you. So all the factions that are actually friendly to you, the Achaean factions, they're all south and they're far away and they're not going to do shit to we're help you out. To there are some factions you, with whom you can maintain and you do start with decent relations with, right? But they're not going to lift a finger to help you. On top of that, you're actually the closest faction of the Achaeans to Troy. You're where the Trojan invasion route, you're, you're directly in the Trojan invasion route. So you have half a dozen factions, all of which can and will likely declare war on you. Uh, you start your initial starting position has you uh, forces you to tr to fight a battle with uh, with an inferior army compared to your opponent, at least in terms of numbers, right? You have to fight this battle on the first turn with the army you start with, because if you don't, uh, they will retreat. Now you can win this without resolve, but it is going to cost you. Then you have another army and a walled city to deal with, and then you have to conquer this entire peninsula and then you have to worry about the Thessalians and you just then it's the roller coaster it just starts happening and keeps going now there are plenty of factions that are easy enough to defeat but you're going to be constantly fighting wars from the very start against pretty powerful factions with a lot of units with, power, with decent economies and they're not going to be so easy to defeat there's so many cities you have to deal with so many factions to contend with and it is going to be a problem and then you're going to have to deal with the Trojan war machine because you're the natural invasion point. You're the place where they would want to come. Like in this entire area, they would want to uh, come over here. So those are the kind of issues you're going to have to deal with Achilles. So he has by far and away the hardest starting position of any faction in, in the game. Because he's surrounded by foes. Because of the way his factions mechanic work, which are going to punish you. They're either going to punish your, your economy or your military, or um, your public order, or your diplomacy. So you're going to suffer because of that, because of Achilles' mood swing. So he is by far and away the hardest to play 
uh, play as. And he doesn't feel like the impossible to defeat force that he should be, perhaps. Okay, so those are, that's the hardest faction. And it's by far and away the hardest. Like, as the Trojans would I say is the hardest? That's a... That's an interesting question, really. I mean, I guess you could argue, perhaps, Paris to some extent, but maybe Hector, actually, just because of his faction mechanics. You can gain a lot of bonuses as Paris, and you can keep them, whereas Hector has to build a coalition of, uh, of factions to get the bon his own faction bonus. But none of the Trojan factions are hard. Okay, what about the easiest factions to play? Well, on this side of things, you do have... You, you can argue Odysseus is easy because he's he's far away from anyone that wants his head. He doesn't have to deal with many opponents. But Agamemnon himself also is in a really good position and has strong economic bonuses. So if you start as Agamemnon, uh, you'll see what I mean. He starts at war with only one faction. He can get plenty of allies from the start. And he can get a lot of resources as well. So... Oh, why I feel like Agamemnon is probably the easiest, him or Odysseus. So if you look at this, King of Menno, the lion's share. So you can ask for resources from your allies, like say for instance I want wood, and that is going to hurt my diplomatic relations, sure, but it's also going to give me the resources that I need. And with those resources I can get some upgrades, I can get some units, I have the walls of Mycenae. Now, people will want a piece of Mycenae, and that is going to be a bit of an issue. As is the fact that your opponent starts with a walled city, that is certainly going to be a problem. But outside of that, you only have one opponent to deal with, and then you have alliances that you can make with plenty of people around you. So you have Ajax here in Salamis. And you can also get resources from this. We've got plenty. Right, they're already my vassal. What can I do for and you can easily unite the Peloponnese. I'm keen to hear what Agamemnon... So you have Diomedes, then Ithaca. The words are honest, I am... And so you don't have to worry about opponents to the to the south, really, except uh, Tereus. You just have to worry about Corinth, Athens, and then some opponents to the west. Deal with them. Uh, Use, rely on your allies, rely on vassalization, get a lot of resources from your vassals, abuse them, absolutely abuse them, and then deal with the Trojan powerhouse when it does arrive. Hell, you can even get good relations with Achilles, right? And use him. He is actually powerful as an AI faction because of the vast amount of resources that the AI gets, but he's not so powerful as a player faction. He is as, actually pretty difficult to play as. So yeah, Agamemnon has an easy uh, start as an Achaean faction. On the Trojan side of things, the question is, which of these guys is easiest? Well, I would have to go with Sarpedon. And, and this is where, I like with Agamemnon and Sarpedon, I do agree with the game. These guys do have a, an easy time, probably the easiest time. So let's take a look at the Sarpedon position. To begin with, you do start in a corner. So opponents can only come against you from a particular direction. And yeah, there are some people here a bit to, to the east, but they're not going to be uh, tough to deal with. And Break you actually start with good relations with talk. with some of them, right? So you, you just get the defensive alliance with uh, Talawa. And then you can just... You deal with the faction that you're at war with. Makes much of his supposedly divine parentage. Yeah, you just, you just deal with Rhodes. That's it. You just have to deal with Rhodes. And that's kind of it. You do have good relations with... A lot of people. Don't make me regret listening to you. And it's fairly easy to get a handle on the situation over here as Lycia. Son. Right, so you just have this army. Heck, you don't even have to uh, worry worry about some someone coming. You you can just march on roads. Deal with roads, like no problem whatsoever. Get a bunch of alliances, get a bunch of your influence, right? I've consulted the omens. Make alliances very easily. May your visit fulfill with all of the Trojan factions. Maybe squeeze them a bit for those Sorry. juicy, juicy resources that they have. Some wine and figs first. But you're also going to be the economic powerhouse, and the reason is because of you have the trade missions, so you can ask for precious resources 
and you can use those precious resources for faction uh, bonuses for fairly significant faction bonuses if you if you get them but yeah, you are isolated you're far away from any major faction except the Amazons except Hippolyta who is friendly with the Trojans who doesn't really want a war with them uh, so you're not gonna have any challenger and no one's really gonna bother with you no one's gonna uh, annoy you no one's going to frustrate you you don't have that many opponents like once you deal with some of the guys in the east perhaps once you deal with roads you're, you're free to expand to the west and just keep going just get that momentum going as uh, sarpedon you obviously don't have the strongest military uh in the game but you do you do have a very powerful economy probably the strongest economy in the game and you can rely on the riches of troy to your advantage as well they will serve as slaves and so i really have to believe that sarpedon is the easiest faction to play but agamemnon also is pretty powerful pretty easy to play as well i mean agamemnon doesn't have the economic might maybe but he has the military might he actually does have a fairly powerful military and he does have plenty of allies right next to, to him i guess one of the issues with sarpedon is that you don't have powerful allies right next to you whereas uh, someone like Paris, someone like Hector, someone like Aeneas does, and they can rely rely on that. Anyway, Questine here on Serious Gaming, signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications. Thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for more.